Prepping the unit, we'll begin with selecting the appropriate glands based on number of heating circuits for cold lead entry, number of RTDs, as well as communication options. The unit can have up to five entries, three on one side and two on the other. These are M25 clearance holes. Glands shall be selected for the cable types used and must also meet local codes. Tools required to complete the prep are a flathead screwdriver to access the terminals and 5 16 nut driver. In this example, we have two heating circuits fed from a single breaker, two RTDs, and relay contacts. Prior to installing the glands, the cover will need to be opened and the CT board needs to be removed to access the gland area inside the duo. Install the glands according to the manufacturer's instructions up to the point where cables can be routed through after installation of duo on the expediter. Any entries in the unit that remain after gland selection is made shall have a blind plug installed to maintain the IP66 rating. After glands are installed, the jumper configuration of the main terminal blocks must be selected. The reason for this is to combine or isolate circuits to individual breakers. Refer to the jumper configurations in the wiring diagram. Now that the unit is prepped, lay the CT board in, close the cover, be sure not to pinch any wires. We can now move on to installation. Open the front clip of the duo to the locking position. Remove the current monitoring and termination assembly from the duo housing. Any wire and cable that's fed through the expediter needs to be fed through the bottom of the Genesis duo until the main housing is resting on the expediter. Slide the expediter wave spring and lock nut over the cable bundle and tighten. Next, land the RTD wires in the front clip. For this, we will use the 2.5mm flathead screwdriver. Route the alarm wires through the cable gland. Land the alarm output wires to the front clip using the same flathead screwdriver. Using tie wrap, secure the wires near the DIN rail of the terminal assembly. Route the power wires through the cable gland. Terminate the power wires according to the wiring diagram. Terminate the heater cables according to the wiring diagram. With all wiring terminated, carefully place the current monitoring and termination assembly back in the housing. Tighten to 14 to 16 inch pounds. Lift the front end vertically to release from the locked position. With wires routed along the sides of the terminal blocks, carefully close the front clip, making sure not to pinch wires. Lock the latch and insert the pin. Power the unit. The rotating red and white light sequence indicates that the duo is booting up. The left side is circuit one and the right side is circuit two. Touch a gauge to see settings for that circuit. Configuration and operation of each circuit is identical. For now, focus on circuit one. In order to enable a circuit, you touch the circuit, select the power state, then it will prompt you to log in as admin to change settings. Anytime a setting is modified, the user must log in as admin. The timeout for the admin login is three minutes of inactivity. While the admin is active, multiple settings can be changed as long as the user is not inactive for more than three minutes. The display responds to touch, even if the user is wearing gloves. The colors on the gauges are also used on the light ring. Blue for low temperature, green for normal operation, yellow for high alarm, red for trip. Notice the light ring flashing blue and wiping to the left. The blue light wiping to the left 
indicates circuit number one is in a low temperature alarm state. Touch the gauge on the left for circuit number one. At the top of the menu is active alarms. Touch active alarms and it will bring up a current list of active alarms. You can acknowledge all alarms or each alarm individually. Now the duo is in a high temperature alarm state. The light ring flashes yellow to indicate the alarm is unacknowledged and wipes to the left to indicate circuit one. The duo is now in a high temperature trip state. The light ring flashes red to indicate unacknowledged trip and wipes to the left to indicate circuit one. The Genesis Duo is now experiencing a programming error indicated by flashing purple light ring. An example might be if the low temperature alarm limit is set above the maintained temperature. The Genesis Duo is capable of indicating multiple alarm states. When multiple alarms are present, the LED ring will cycle through each alarm indicating acknowledged or unacknowledged and wipe left or right, indicating which circuit. 